this for uh, 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 the purpose of demo now once all the parts are cleaned and dried i, I can start assembling the watch and then um, lubricate the jewels now for that uh, uh, for the, since we had attached the balance assembly already i'm just going to uh, remove that Now at any point, uh, either during this uh, disassembly or assembly, if you feel that the uh, parts are sticking to your uh, tweezers, just uh, dip it in Rodico. Uh, you may uh, find it uh, more easier to handle after that. Because some of uh, some of the foil or cleaning fluid would have got stuck to the tweezers, and that uh, uh, will cause a lot of issues. Now keep the balance in that position, away from your work area. Just going to set it properly on the moment holder. <laughs> I'm just going to clean um, uh, the moment with Rodico. Just to make sure that there's no small uh, uh, dust particles. Um, or any leftover cleaning fluid I'm just going to lubricate uh, with the oil first uh, out of the centermost jewel through which uh, uh, the uh, center wheel uh, center wheel would run and the cannon pinion uh, would be fixed from this end I'm just going to lubricate around the jewel as well so that uh, the cannon pinion wouldn't have much of friction while running I'll do the same on um, the other end. Uh, just like how I uh, lubricated the inside of uh, the mainspring barrel, I'm just going to lubricate here uh, uh, because the center wheel uh, runs very close uh, to the base of the moment. I mean the base of the main plate. Now that is uh, the cannon pinion. And that is the center wheel. We'll have to clean them both with Rodico first before assembling. Just run the gear teeth on Rodico and uh, push the pivots into Rodico and clean them. Uh, and make sure that you don't leave any residue Rodico on um, uh, the parts itself. If, and if you do, uh, then uh, the best way to remove Rodico is again by using Rodico itself. Now I'm going to use the riveting block uh, to fix the cannon pinion. I'm just going to insert cannon pinion uh, upside down. Um, into a hole uh, of uh, the re required sides I mean the size of the cannon pinion and then I'm going to align uh, the center of uh, the base plate on that and just push uh, the center wheel into its uh, place uh, the ba uh, basically uh, cannon pinion should be uh, pushed right onto the post of the center wheel Make sure uh, you don't apply too much of pressure and end up uh, either bending or uh, da or uh, breaking any of these parts. You can see it's uh, firmly in place now. And to make sure that it uh, runs smoothly, I'm just going to blow a little bit of air uh, to the center wheel 
and it should uh, start spinning freely in that position. You can see now uh, that it's quite free to spin. And, and now that is a good indication. Now, uh, next, I'm going to assemble the crown onto the stem. Again, um, to the uh, threads of the stem, you should uh, grease it. But uh, since I don't have grease, I'm just going to uh, put a small amount of oil there. And again, uh, uh, this other part of the stem that goes inside the moment, that you'll have to lubricate it. I'm dipping it directly in oil here. You may prefer to apply it uh, with the oil pin. If you're dipping it in oil, make sure that you're not applying too much of oil, just the right amount at the right place. Now I'm um, lubricating the part that would slide into the clutch wheel uh, that you cannot uh, just uh, keep it directly in the oil so I'm just going to apply uh, oil to that uh, with uh, the oil pen. Oil pen is technic uh, technically called as an oiler but uh, the watch mechanics and the spare shops here refer to it as the oil pen. I'm just going to fit the stem uh, into the pin wise. And I'm going to uh, fit the crown to the stem. A bit of oil to the threads of the crown as well. Just thread it in place. Now even that is ready for assembly. So I'm going back to the moment. Now uh, the next part that I'm going to assemble is the setting lever. Uh, now uh, the setting lever uh, comes along with a sm uh, sort of spring and the spring also locks it in place. Now since I had difficulty removing that spring uh, with the tweezer, I'm just going to use the Rodico for that job. Rodico comes quite handy when uh, you're picking up small parts uh, that uh, you may not be able to pick up with the tweezers. Now that is the screw that fixes them in place. I'm just going to clean the setting lever first in Rodico. The end of the uh, setting lever that I just pushed in, uh, that uh, is the same thing that sticks out uh, on the uh, on the moment as the button that is used to release uh, the stem. I'm going to spring uh, clean the spring. Now this spring is not uh, the setting lever spring that I uh, had mentioned earlier. This is a different spring that would uh, push the setting lever back into its original position. I'm going to insert this, uh, the open end of uh, the spring to a notch that is uh, uh, that is present under the setting lever. Just push it into its place. And uh, now insert uh, the setting lever.
I'm going to lubricate uh, the part of the moment where the setting lever would uh, swing and also the hole uh, to which it would fit to that is uh, the button uh, to release the stem I'm just going to uh, put the setting lever in the right orientation A small projection under the setting lever uh, should lock onto a small groove that is on the stem. Once the setting lever is in place, you can just align uh, the, ho uh, ho the screw hole in the spring and then uh, put the screw in and tighten it up. Just tighten the uh, spring onto the main plate. Now you should see that the setting lever should spring when I just pull out uh, on the stem. And the stem is now uh, held in place by the setting lever. Now I'll have to use uh, the button to release the stem. Pushing the button basically pushes the setting lever out of the way so that the stem can be uh, slid out. Now I'm going to clean the clutch wheel on the Rodico and also the winding pinion. The clutch wheel has two ends, uh, one end uh, which acts like a clutch and the other end uh, which would uh, uh, be in contact with the intermediate wheel to set time. Now this is the winding pinion. Now I'm going to lubricate the insides of the clutch wheel and the winding pinion and also the uh, teeth of the clutch wheel as well. Now this is a bit of a tricky part. Uh, you'll have to ins uh, you'll have to slide the stem in and once it's in then you'll have to uh, push in uh, the winding pinion first and then the clutch wheel onto the stem i'll just angle the stem upwards a little bit first i'll slide in the winding pinion Uh, the winding pinion uh, has uh, the teeth, a uh, matching teeth for the clutch wheel, so that uh, the orientation uh, should be properly uh, taken care of. Now the winding pinion, it's quite tricky to put in there. It may be more easier uh, assembled uh, if you are done with all the other parts on the other side of the moment, but I prefer doing it in this way. Now the winding pinion is in. Now I'm going to insert the clutch wheel in its proper orientation again. Now just uh, straighten the stem up and then push it into its place. Now you can see that both parts are in there quite secure. And until you assemble the moment completely don't release the stem otherwise these two parts will fall off. Now the next part that I'll have to assemble is the yoke and the yoke spring and the SLS to lock it all. I'm 
I'm going to clean all these parts uh, with a piece of Rodico. Now technically Rodico shouldn't be reused but uh, uh, just because it's quite costly I uh, will have to use uh, reuse the Rodico. Even the SLS should be properly cleaned. I'm going to lubricate the hole uh, that is in present in the yolk. I'll have to uh, slide the yolk, uh, uh, slide the hole in the yolk uh, onto the post that is present on the main plate, and uh, make sure that you are putting it in the, the right orientation again. Now, a photograph of the movement or a manual uh, might help. Just photograph it while uh, disassembling it. Otherwise, you may require a bit of trial and error if you don't get it right. You can see it's properly in place right now, and the clutch wheel can easily move. Now, I'm going to put uh, uh, the yoke spring in its uh, place as well. Now, again, um, you'll have to hold it in place while uh, you insert it into the position otherwise it may just jump off be very careful while doing this this has an affinity to jump off the tweezers and then you may uh, not find it at all just going to push it into its place and lock it now I'm going to insert the SLS uh, in its uh, uh, requ uh, desired place and uh, then screw it in place uh, screw it uh, it in place the main function of the SLS is to uh, lock the stem in two positions that is uh, uh, the winding position and uh, uh, the position where you would set the time and also make sure that uh, the stem wouldn't slide out or in too much Uh, you may find here that the hole on the SLS and uh, the screw hole on the main plate is misaligned a little bit. Just push it in and uh, screw it in place. That is because you need to have some amount of tension uh, on the spring that is in the setting lever. I mean the setting uh, the SLS. Now just lubricate uh, the part where the uh, end of the SLS. Uh, would meet uh, the setting lever, a uh, small projection of the setting lever to be precise. I'm just going to wipe that excess off. You can see that you should be able to pull that, pull the stem and it should lock in place, push it in and it should go to the winding position. Now next I'm going to uh, assemble the intermediate wheel, uh, the minute wheel and uh, uh, the minute wheel bridge. Just going to clean the minute wheel on the Rodico. and the intermediate wheel as well if you can um, uh, find it easy then you may uh, want to wear fingertip gloves while working on uh, watches so that uh, you don't introduce more dirt uh, into the watch
I'm just going to lubricate uh, the inner part of uh, the intermediate wheel. And also the minute wheel. Just clean uh, those parts on the main plate as well with Rodico and lubricate them. Minute wheel is one of the gears uh, that runs uh, while touching the uh, main plate itself. So I'm just going to lubricate uh, that whole part on the main plate with a piece of uh, pegwood. So just making sure that there's no metal to metal contact at any point. Now I'm just uh, going to put the minute wheel in its place. Next the intermediate wheel. I'll just clean the minute wheel bridge on Rodico, then even secure that in place. A small rectangular like projection that is on the minute wheel bridge uh, should cover the intermediate wheel. I'm just going to lubricate that part of a little bit so that the intermediate wheel wouldn't rub on it. Basically it shouldn't rub on it. Now if you do have a confusion on uh, parts which are flat like this on which side is up and which side is down. Uh, just look for a, a countersink on the screw hole. Uh, that part should always uh, be up. So that they would ma uh, match with the countersink that is on the screw head. Now the two really small screws are for uh, the minute wheel bridge. Just uh, uh, secure the minute wheel bridge in position with those two small screws. Be careful while you are handling these screws, uh, they may be uh, quite uh, tricky to handle. And just uh, pull uh, this time into the setting position and see that all the gears uh, move there. I'm just going to lubricate the intersection uh, between the gear teeth and that oil will spread evenly um, uh, when you uh, turn um, the crown. Make sure that all parts are moving freely there. Now I'll just flip the moment and the moment holder and uh, now I'm going to uh, fix uh, the center wheel bridge. Now at this point if you just pull the stem and uh, turn the crown you should be able to see that the center wheel is also uh, spinning. Now I have cleaned the uh, bridge uh, that goes on the center wheel and um, I'm going to lubricate uh, the uh, the jewel that is present on this bridge. Now again, this is a through hole. I'm going to lubricate the insides of it. I'm going to lubricate the top of the center jewel. 
and uh, fix uh, the bridge in place. And the center wheel should be free to move and it shouldn't have too much of end shake. I'm just going to lub uh, lubricate uh, the jewel holes here. Uh, I don't know if this is really required, but I just follow this procedure. So before I fix that bridge in place, I'm just going to lubricate all the jewels. and I'm going to fix the bridge in place you can see that the center wheel is uh, still quite free to rotate and as I mentioned earlier just pulling the stem into the sitting position and turning it will also rotate the center wheel now you can see I have uh, the rest of the three gears lined up now this is the escape wheel I'm just going to clean that in Rodico as well. Escape wheel is comparatively uh, more delicate uh, than the other gears, so be quite careful with it. Also, the pivots of these gears are very delicate. Handle them with uh, utmost care. I'm going to clean the gate teeth of them on the Rodico as well. Now that is the part to which the second hand would attach to. Now this is the third wheel. Clean both the gear and the pinion end of this. I prefer to roll the gear end onto the rodico and then push the pinion end uh, into the rodico for cleaning. Now I'm going to insert the third wheel into its uh, uh, respective look, uh, place that is uh, the small hole that you can find uh, on the center wheel bridge. Just align it so that uh, the, uh, the pivot of uh, the third wheel uh, fits into its uh, respective gel hole. Uh, the same thing with the escape wheel as well. Its pivot should fit it to its uh, gel hole. You should be able to feel that. Uh, don't push it into its place. Fourth wheel is the last one to go. Just align all of the gears upright. And when you are not working on the moment, just uh, make sure that you close them so no dirt would get in there. Now I am cleaning the train bridge here with Rodico. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to lubricate uh, the jewel from this end as well. Just a small amount of oil. And I'm going to close the bridge onto the uh, gas. Uh, the gas should be kept uh, upright. Uh, that is perfectly uh, vertical. And once you uh, place the bridge in place, uh, you may have to just uh, move the uh, gear slightly so that the pivots uh, would uh, move into their respective gel holes. You may do that with the tweezers or uh, with the oil pin, but that should be very slight movements. It shouldn't be forced. And once uh, they're all in place, they should be uh, spinning quite freely. Now here the fourth wheel would be the easiest to align uh, from what I have seen. 
uh, then you should be aligning the third wheel and then the escape wheel that is the order that I prefer sometimes you may uh, end up aligning all of them on the first attempt itself sometimes for example like this you may uh, have to uh, do a, a work a bit uh, to get them in their uh, right places all the gears are aligned and they are spinning freely so I am just going to screw the bridge in its place Just tighten the screws and the gear should be secure. Let's just pull the stem and turn the crown, the gear should be freely spinning. But before that, I'm just going to lubricate the pivots uh, that is sticking out in the jewels. Now uh, here again inside the jewel there should be just a small film of oil uh, around the pivot between the jewel and the pivot. Now to get an idea of that you should be able to find quite a lot of images on Google on uh, what is the correct uh, uh, amount of oil that should be there in a jewel. And you may use a bit of magnification that is a loop for that job. make sure that the oil you are using is not dirty and I'm just going to wipe the excess of the oil off with a tissue paper that is the oil that could have uh, been on the bridge itself I'm lubricating the uh, bottom gels as well for these gears Once that's done, uh, if you just pull on uh, pull the stem and then turn the crown, all the gears should be moving uh, freely now. Now after that, we'll uh, we'll just clean the barrel that we have assembled earlier, and then insert it into its uh, place. Now again the bar uh, bottom end of the barrel would uh, rub onto the uh, main plate so we'll, we're just going to lubricate the base of the main plate. Also the hole uh, through which the arbor pivot uh, would be running through on the main plate. Add uh, little uh, plenty amount of oil here. I've seen watch mechanics smearing too much of oil at this place. I don't think that would be necessary. Just add uh, enough amount of oil. Insert the barrel into its position and now just uh, spin the barrel to make sure that it is uh, meshing with the rest of the gear train. It's quite difficult to spin it but uh, uh, just uh, a small round would uh, uh, would be good and also pull back on the stem and turn so that the barrel should turn with the rest of the gear train 
going to lubricate uh, some of the teeth on the barrel as well and also the uh, teeth of the rest of the gear train just put a small drop of oil one or on one or two of the teeth and uh, as the moment spins i mean as as the gear spins uh, that will be spread to the rest of the gear train i'm just going to clean the barrel bridge now on rodico some amount of oil on top of the barrel as well as i mentioned earlier the barrel cap uh, should be closed firmly otherwise it can um, rub on to the barrel bridge and that can uh, make the watch stop quite easily now i'm going to uh, put the barrel bridge into its place I'm just going to lubricate uh, the underside uh, of the place where uh, the crown wheel and the ratchet wheel would run. Now cleaning the small ring around which the crown wheel would run. I'll have to just push it into its place. That's uh, definitely not there. Um, yeah, there. Just push it into its place. Now it's the crown wheel. I'm just going to clean that on the Rodico again. Uh, I should have lubricated the inside of the crown wheel as well. And I'm just going to screw that in place and uh, remember again that it's a left hand screw so to tighten it you should uh, turn it in the counterclockwise direction unlike a normal screw now it's uh, the click that I'm cleaning you can just assemble that in place then screw it down now the screw of the click again is uh, of a different size so uh, the other screws uh, wouldn't fit here uh, make sure you are using the right uh, size screw for this Now uh, that is uh, the click spring. The longer end of the click spring uh, would go under the click and, uh, and the other end is just uh, pressed in and locked into the notch that is provided. Make sure again that uh, the click spring doesn't jump out. It has a tendency to jump out so be very careful with that. 
Now I'm just going to clean the ratchet wheel. You can see that the uh, center hole of the ratchet wheel is not circular in shape, it is uh, a square. Uh, so is the top of the uh, arbor uh, that is sticking out. So you should align uh, the arbor and uh, the hole of uh, the ratchet wheel. Not only that, even the click uh, should be properly uh, in place. Uh, the click should be locking onto the ratchet wheel, kind of. I have to just rotate it slightly so that uh, everything gets aligned. You can see that uh, everything is aligned now. So I'll just uh, uh, screw in uh, the ratchet wheel. Now here notice that uh, the screw of the ratchet wheel is quite smaller compared to that of the crown wheel. Please make a note of that uh, and uh, you cannot interchange these two screws again. Now screw the barrel bridge in place. I'm going to lubricate the uh, underside uh, of the uh, pivot of the arbor. Should be able to find its location there. Just a bit, Just a bit of oil uh, where the arbor sticks out of the main plate. You should uh, have a thin film around it. I'm just going to wind the mainspring up now and you can see that the moment unwinds. That's a good sign that uh, everything is going good on the moment. I'm just going to clean the ba uh, clean the pallet uh, bridge now. I'm going to clean the pallet lever as well. Uh, the pallet lever, I'll have to clean the pivots of it, uh, the pallet stones and the fork end of it as well. going to lubricate the jewel on the uh, bridge as well, the pallet bridge as well. Just a small drop of oil. Just uh, wipe the excess off with the tissue. I'm going to insert the pallet lever in place. Before that, uh, the part that I'm oiling, uh, I mean, uh, I'm lubricating right now, it's called as the entry pallet. I'm just going to place a small drop of oil in there. This is not only to lubricate the uh, pallets of the pallet lever, but also uh, the teeth of the escape wheel. It is quite difficult to directly lubricate the escape wheel. So this uh, a method that I uh, read online. Just going to uh, place the pallet lever in its uh, proper uh, jewel. And I'm going to place uh, the uh, pallet bridge on top of it. Just place it uh, properly, align it with the help of those towel pins. Then you should be able to screw that in place. Make sure that the pallet is uh, in the proper uh, uh, place before you screw it in. 
that is the palate is uh, properly functioning palate shouldn't be wobbling it should just uh, swing from side to side now I'm going to wind the movement again you can see that the movement is not unwinding now because the palate is locking the, uh, the palate lever is locking that and I'm just going to uh, shake the palate lever with the help of the tweezers and that is going to spread the oil that I have added on the entry palate uh, to the teeth of the escape wheel that's also a good indication that uh, the movement is functioning quite good to this stage now uh, probably the most important part for a mechanical wristwatch the balance should be assembled this is the proper way to hold a balance then just uh, assemble it in place with the help of the dowel pins again you can see now that uh, the balance has already started uh, uh, to run even before I have screwed it down that's a good sign that uh, the moment is properly serviced and the balance uh, should be picking up uh, good amplitude as well as speed if it's, if it's running too slow that's a good indication that uh, the watch is not running properly and it's running very fast uh, but you can see that uh, the balance wheel has good amplitude now and it's also running quite fast now I'm going to flip the moment over now on the dial side I'll have to assemble the R wheel now how to clean the R wheel with Rodico and also the dial washer I'm going to lubricate on the cannon pinion as well and uh, uh, the, the, pa the, the parts on the uh, main plate where uh, the R wheel would make contact just spread the oil R wheel is uh, quite of like a free part it is uh, not held in place uh, by any bridge it is just held in uh, placed directly by the R's hand and the dial itself. I'm going to lubricate uh, the R wheel uh, teeth as well. And that should just spread the oil. And I'm going to wipe the excess off. I'm just going to get the dial out of the Ziploc car. The Ziploc car was mainly to uh, protect uh, the dial from any sort of a damage during service or any dirt uh, getting onto the dial. You may want to clean the dial or just uh, uh, clean it with, uh, with uh, the dial brush. Now I'm going to uh, just clean the dial washer on Rodico. Now the watch uh, can function properly even without a dial washer but it is preferred uh, to have a dial washer. In fact, you may find a lot of parts missing dial washers after services because the watch mechanics would have just simply lost them or may not have cared to just put them back in. Now I'm going to loosen uh, the dial screws that I had tightened earlier. I'm going to insert the dial into its place. Now uh, the stem should align with 3 o'clock position. You should also see a small notch at that position on the dial um, to align the stem. And just tighten the screws to fit the dial in place. Just some uh, puffing of air on the dial so that there's just no dust. 
and if uh, the if, uh, the dial uh, foot are broken then you may glue the dial in place but that is really not preferred for that you may use fevi bond cleaning dial with a bit of rodico the dial uh, when i got it it had more damage uh, the so i had to get the dial clean uh, by watch mechanic with white petrol and uh, it's as good as new now uh, but uh, the mercury even though it says that it can be used for cleaning dials it can take uh, the print off uh, the dials uh, sometimes i'm going to clean the hands of the watch in uh, rodico as well Now you do have a tool to fit uh, these uh, hands in place as well but I don't have one so uh, I'm just going to push it in place with the help of tweezers and my ha and my fingernails just like that but uh, make sure that you don't damage the dial just pull this time out and just uh, give a complete 360 degree turn for the hour hang and then stop it at the 3 o'clock position uh, this is my preferred method now make sure it runs in both the directions now once it's at the 3 o'clock position, I'm going to uh, clean the minute hang. And fix that uh, to the uh, uh, pointing at uh, the 12 marker. So basically the hand should be uh, perfectly 90 degrees uh, apart now. Just push that in place. Now this alignment of the hands is very important otherwise the watch uh, may not display the time correctly. If you do find a misalignment you can just uh, align the R hands uh, by pulling uh, the stem out and then push the R hand into the proper orientation. Now I'm going to check if it's properly aligned at 6 o'clock and I'm just following. And uh, since it's not I'm just following the steps that I just described push the R hand into the 6 o'clock position. Now at 9 o'clock. Now uh, both hands should align with each other at 12 o'clock. 3 o'clock again and then I'm going to rotate it uh, again uh, uh, to 2 o'clock position. Now I'm just going to clean the seconds hand. Once uh, the R hand uh, minute uh, hands are uh, satisfactorily aligned and I'm going to push that into its respective place on the tile and just you can just push that with uh, in, into its place uh, with the back of the tweezers now I'm back on the case I have cleaned the uh, case now open the case back clean around uh, uh, the moment with the rodico and also the plastic ring now this plastic ring is to make sure that the moment doesn't shake uh, once inside the case now I'm going to release the stem you may want to uh, clean the insides of the case uh, before inserting uh, it in place now the moment is in the case and I'm inserting the plastic ring it has a provision uh, from where the stem would run so please uh, align it accordingly and it's better to fit the plastic uh, ring before putting uh, the moment inside the case you can see it's now aligned properly and is in place I'm going to insert that in the case as well and Align the moment inside the case properly. And push the stem into its place. Just push down on the button and push the stem in. Uh, make sure that uh, it goes into the setting position. And also the winding position. 
and just close the case back you may want to uh, just clean the case back before closing there a bit of uh, uh, puffing of air from the blower not too much on the moment itself it may uh, make the balance wheel run very fast it may damage the balance wheel as well just uh, snap that in place and the watch should be ready the watch is ready and running now Now, just like any watch mechanic, I just prefer to uh, sign the case back and also uh, put the date of service in there. Uh, this also helps you because uh, the next time um, you check uh, your, any of your watches, you'll know when you have last serviced it and when does it need uh, the service again. Now, here are some snaps of the watch. Now, uh, post this video, I did uh, run into few issues with the watch. For example, the pilot lever as I described earlier, so I had to replace that. I also and I also ended up damaging the crystal uh, so I got that replaced because I didn't have the necessary tools to replace it myself and I have cleaned the case uh, with some toothpaste here yeah. uh, this is a loom shot of the watch now uh, with some toothpaste and water I have cleaned the case and then I have uh, let it dry I have actually dried it uh, with a hair dryer and then uh, after it's completely devoid of water uh, then I have assembled it again and I have also uh, swapped the hands uh, for a new one a new Kohinoor watch hands and I'm quite satisfied with the watch now I can wear it now it's running quite good I've checked it for one day uh, or I think two days and it's uh, running quite satisfactory uh, thank you for watching the video and please do leave your uh, uh, valuable uh, suggestions and feedbacks uh, but please do go through the disclaimer before that because uh, yes some of uh, uh, the methods that I've followed is not really uh, recommended uh, by the company or uh, by any of the watch mechanics uh, because of some of the constraints of my own so please go through the disclaimer where I've described them in more detail and uh, the bottom line as I mentioned earlier uh, yes uh, I do follow this method and my watches do run uh, but please try this at your own risk uh, thanks a lot again but uh, it's fun servicing your own watch and then wearing it thank you